Yeah, Joe, uh, with regard to Daniel and, and the turnovers, I know he's gone to great lengths in the offseason to try to improve that, uh, and yet it's still kind of rearing its head this year. What kind of things – are you seeing any common denominators there in, in what's going on, and, and what kind of things can you do to, to prevent it? Yeah, we got to do a better job as coaches, putting our players in situations to really be successful on the field. And I think every <clears> – <throat> excuse me, every player right now has just got to do a better job elevating our level of play on the game and executing. So – Look, specifically to any one player, you know, there's always reasons, never just one guy. We've got to string some things together. But we have a lot of confidence in Daniel and excited to get him on the grass going forward. Jordan? Joe, how do you uh, plan to handle the West Coast travel? Anything different? And I know you talked about the hydration. This is an even longer flight now, so. Yeah, so to be honest with you, we're going to kind of take a page out of a couple of teams' books along with, you know, place I was. So we're going to go out there early Saturday. A lot of teams travel on Friday to kind of reset that circadian rhythm. We're going to go out there Saturday. We're going to get out there early, get our guys in the sunlight for a little bit, kind of get them in the UV rays. It should help reset their body clocks a little bit. Being as though it's not a prime time game at night, you know, it's less than 24 hours on a trip for us. It shouldn't affect us overly in terms of that kind of window we're going in there. We're going to go ahead and stay on East Coast time as much as we can, and then I'll wake up the next thing and get ready to play. The one thing I think that stand out there we're going to do a little bit differently is, like several teams have done lately, is we're going to stay out there after the game on Sunday. So instead of return back immediately afterwards, we're going to stay out, make sure the guys get a good night's sleep. We'll get the film graded that night, watch with the players the next morning, get that all cleaned up. We'll fly back, give some opportunities to coaches to work on the next opponent going forward, give the players a good amount of time between Monday night getting home and Tuesday as the off day. And we're really looking to avoid some of that jet lag time coming back and trying to keep the players as fresh as possible. So this is something we talked about in the offseason when the schedule came out with a lot of coaches around the league and things they've done in the past. It was something that we thought you know, could really help our players, not just for this week, but also leading the next week's trip back to Texas. So you're saying come fly back Monday afternoon? Yes, yeah, so we're, we're going to leave, leave Monday morning. We're going to leave Monday around lunchtime, West Coast time. Should get us back here to the Quest building somewhere around 8, 830. Thanks, Jeff. Hey, Joe. Um, you know, with the Rams, I mean, obviously they're going to, you know, make game plan adjustments to attack, you know, what you guys do uh, on defense. But with their offense, is it something with them that they're just able to run what they run because they run it so well, or, you know, more than other teams? Or, or do they change a lot week to week? Well, I think it's a combination of both. Their identity is really a strong identity, and they do it extremely well. You know, they run that zone run game. They can change up around the gap runs inside with the poles and all, but they're very effective in their run game. Cromer does a great job of stringing that together. And in the pass game, they really set you up off the run. And whether it's the play actions, the boots, or the third down passing game where they're dropping back and golf can sit back there and pick you apart, they do a great job of that. Now, that being said, you know, Sean doesn't just hammer in the same playbook over and over. He's going to find things that showed up on tape you know, that you leave as a weakness, and he's going to find a way to put that in the game plan and look to expose you. Thanks, Joe. We got time for three more. Art, Schwartz, and Pat Leonard. Art. Hey, Joe, now uh, now that it's official, could you talk a little bit about what you liked from Audrey Harper and, uh, you know, how that process went for you, for you guys? Yeah, he's a guy that we've known about for some time now, to be honest with you. I mean, obviously there's no preseason game, so – the exposure early on at 53 cut was a little bit limited. Um, he ended up staying in Vegas, being part of the practice squad, but he's a guy we've had our eye on. He's a good athlete. He's a long rangey guy with good speed. Uh, he's definitely a developing player. I like the competitiveness he plays with. He's definitely somebody that we're anxious to get on the grass, start moving forward with him. Because of the protocols, we just got him in the building today and got everything official. Um, we'll see where he goes in terms of his involvement for this week. You know, getting someone on Thursday, we'll see how much we can kind of get him going and get him caught up on and if there's a role or not in this week's game plan. But we'll probably take that up to the wire to decide what we're going to do with them this week. But we're excited to have them in the building and get working with them. How does that process work uh, just in terms of, I mean, is it a heavy scouting thing? I mean, because uh, we were talking, we just happened to be talking to Jerome uh, when I guess you had just told him that you guys were, were signing uh, Harper. So how does that process work? I mean, what, you know, is it really a heavy scouting thing? Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's our job to know everybody coming out of the college into the draft, and it's our job to know everybody in the league of who's where. And that's who's on certain practice squads, who's been getting tried out at different clubs, who's been elevated and protected in these new practice squad rules. So we're looking around the league all the time, trying to learn who's out there. We've got our college grades on people. Obviously, we haven't been able to put a pro grade on this guy yet because he didn't play any preseason games. So you're really, with all these rookies, relying off your college evaluation of them. But you've just got to have a good feeling of what you're looking at right there and the skill set to develop. Uh, but between you know the personnel department, Dave, myself, uh, we've gone through a number of players. He's obviously one of them, and we thought this was a good opportunity to get him in here and get working with him.
Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Art. Bar Schwartz. Hey, Joe. Um, um, uh, Sean McVay said yesterday that it's a real pain to prepare to play your defense. Um, uh, is that just uh, blowing smoke? What do you think he means by that? And also, Patrick uh, Graham just said, he says often, he said it a lot today about um, it's on him, it's on me. I have to um, take a hard look at myself. What's the balance with a coach between saying, look, it's on me, or saying, look, it's on me, but it's also on them? You know, I give them the plan, they got to do it. Well, look, I think as coaches, we have to be very self critical. Okay, so when I watch the tape, you know, there's things that players have to correct, but I always look at myself in the mirror first. And as coaches, I think that's how you have to be. Am I doing everything possible to teach these guys the best way? Am I doing everything possible to paint that mental image that they can go out there and execute on the grass? And am I putting them in the ideal situations to play to their strengths? So as a coaching staff, we have to ask ourselves that on a daily basis through practice, on a weekly basis through the games. If you're not self-critical as a coach, I don't think you're a very good coach. If you're someone who wants to simply look at players and say, well, he has to play better, he has to do this, what did you do to put him in that position? So to me, for our staff, we've got to be a group of guys who watch the tape and we see ourselves in our performance of the players, and we have to make sure that we're doing everything possible to help elevate their level of play. And do you think your defense is a pain to play against? I think we bring a lot of elements teams have to prepare for. That being said right now, that offense we're going to see this week is tremendous. So you talk about them on early downs, running the ball, their play action pass. You talk about on third down with the efficiency of extending drives. You talk about golf's completion percentage, their success in the red zone. I mean, this team right here is, you know, they're more than a pain. This is really one of the top teams in the league, definitely one of the top offenses in the league. Sean does a great job of identifying what the defense is doing, making adjustments not only within the specific play through the coach to quarterback communication, but throughout the game in terms of seeing what you're doing and making the adjustments. So. You can't be stagnant in your game plan. You have to go through the game and understand the chess pieces that are moving around and anticipate what you have to do next as well. Thanks, Joe. As well. Last one here, Pat Leonard. Joe, hey, in the, in the first three weeks, do you see any common thread in what's going wrong on these end of first half drives for your defense, maybe not just not finishing a half? You know what, they've all been unique situations, but the emphasis is we have to finish better, Pat. So that's something we're working on as a team. It's something we've been working on as a team. We have to do a better job setting up the practice scenarios as coaches. Uh, we made some adjustments in practice of things we're doing. Uh, I've got to do a better job as the head coach emphasizing that aspect of the game and putting our players in position to practice that and have the success in practice that carries over to the game. So on that end, Pat, we've given up touchdowns at the end of each half. That's not acceptable. That can't happen. Uh, but we have to do a better job right now in making sure that we're just preparing for that the absolute best way.